Hey guys and gals, it's the Cannabis Crone. Um, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm doing Sunday church on Saturday because it's a beautiful day, although right now the sun just went in. <laughs> it's a very chilly. Um, it's only like uh, 48 degrees right now, so yeah. A little chilly, but with the sun, when the sun is out from behind the cloud, oh, it's just beautiful. And we only have a handful of days like this left, at least here in northern Minnesota, if, if it's going to be a normal winter, so... Yeah, I'm taking advantage of it. But I just wanted to do a quick check-in with everybody and see how you're doing. Now, if you are someone who is struggling with mental illness during this really weird time, this weird year, this 2020, you know, I mean, all of these uh, things that man has done have, have come to a head. We've got climate change that is so in your face now, you can't deny that it's happening. Uh, we have um, the race issue, uh, uh, the, the, the blatant racism, the murdering of people due to their skin color. This is coming to a head. Um, and we're finally saying no, you know, after what, a hundred and whatever years. No, we're, this is not right. And so this is, we're almost in a civil war in this country, I feel like. I really do. I feel like, in, but instead of the North against the South, it's the humans against the anti-humans. And it's scary. You know, because I, I live in a, in a county that has a lot of anti-humans in it. So it's some scary shit. Anyway, so I have bipolar disorder and with a side order of OCD. Okay. And I just wanted to talk to any OCD sufferers out there because I'm sure your symptoms have gotten worse. I know mine have. And I just wanted to give you a couple of tips. The first tip is, yeah, you have to. In fact, I'm going <laughs> to... I should let you, well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm going to try and take a hit while I'm talking because it's hard to do when I'm hiking. So anyway, yes, cannabis has been a huge help for me. And it's one of the main reasons I'm not on pharmaceuticals right now. And as you know, pharmaceuticals, uh, especially when dealing with mental health issues, have horrible side effects. I was on 80 milligrams of Prozac a day in my 20s. And then, and it worked at first. Yeah. And then, um, and then it started not working. And so they upped me again. And then they wanted to put me on some different medications that had just come out. I felt like a guinea pig. And so I ended up taking myself off of, uh, off of Prozac with the help of a Vino skull cap compound. I'll say that again, a vino skull cap compound. If you want to quit smoking or quit oxy or quit crack or whatever, you, if you're trying to get off of something, if you have a strong addiction, this is a very, this is a very, very good herb that can help you, um, withdraw safely and, you know, not as painfully as without. So it's, uh, I, I recommend it. And in fact, the regular skull cap I'm on every day. And so is my partner. Uh, that's another thing. I found some herbs that actually work to help me balance out. And skull cap is one of them. There's a couple of other different ones. There's mother wart. Uh, there's St. John's wart. Now, mother wart is kind of, uh, it's a little more geared towards females. It works better with the female system and St. John's wort seems to work better with the male system, but both are really good herbs, uh, for that kind of stuff. Um, there's valerian, which is really, um, that's especially good for sleep. If you are a sufferer of insomnia and you drink valerian tea, if you have cats, watch out though. They'll attack your flipping face while you're drinking it. And I, I kid you not cats like valerian more than catnip. They go crazy for it. And I was drinking tea one night and my cat attacked my mouth to get to the, to get to the valerian. It's horrible. Um, and if you put it in like a sock and you let it you know, you let your cats have at it. Oh my God, they'll have so much fun. Um, Valerian smells like a 10 year old's sweaty gym socks. It's, it's not a very pleasant smell, but it's a really good herb. So there's some, there's, like I said, Valerian, there's motherwort, St. John's wort. I'm on skullcap. Again, that's, that's a really, that's a good one. So there's a lot of things. Increasing your potassium, making sure you're getting enough potassium can help if you're a sufferer of mental illness. And actually, if you're low on potassium, Anybody, even if you don't have mental illness, you should uh, rectify that situation right away. Uh, it's very important that your potassium levels are where they're supposed to be. 
Uh, a lot of health problems can stem from that. And, um, and talking to yourself. Okay. I can't afford a therapist. So I talk to myself and I talk to you guys too, but, um, I talk to my mental illness the way I would talk to another person because it's a part of me. It's living in my head. So especially with my OCD, I've learned to bargain with it. Now everyone has different, uh, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. Everyone has different rituals that they have to follow because of their, some people it's cleaning, some people it's, um, pulling their hair. I mean, there's just all sorts of things. Some people it's counting. Some people, um, it's making sure that everything is off in the house and unplugged. That's me. That's, that's part of mine. Um, or having to stop and make sure that a dead animal is really dead so that it doesn't suffer on the road. I mean, even if I can see that it is completely annihilated, I still have to stop. I'm so, and it was much worse when I was a little kid. It started when I was about 12, and it made it very hard in school. It made it hard to socialize. It, it, um, it, really, it changed who I was as a person. Having obsessive-compulsive disorder is exhausting, and I don't want to go too long here. I don't want to bore you guys, but I will say this. There's a, a, a book that you should, or a short story, rather, that you should read by Stephen King, and the title is a letter. It's N, just N. And it's about obsessive compulsive disorder. And leave it to Stephen King to take something that's already horrific and turn it into something that's uh, 20 times worse than he did. So, But it's a really cool story. I can only read it once every like six or seven months, though. It's that intense. It's really... But anyway, it's called Anne. And in this, in this book, the psychiatrist, or the psychiatrist character, is summing up what OCD is like. And he says he much likens it to... Uh, his patients being pecked to death by invisible birds that nobody can see but themselves. They're the only ones that can see these invisible birds pecking pieces of flesh away every day. And it's not really overly dramatic. And if, and if anyone watching suffers from OCD, from real you know, OCD like I do, it's, it's very exhausting. You know, the, the one thing that I do look forward to when, I, when my time is done here on this planet <laughs> is that I won't have to worry about making sure that all the faucets are off and all that shit, you know, as if my life depended on it. And if, if you're not someone who suffers from OCD, it's, I know, I understand, it's really hard to understand. But the feeling that we get is such a severe anxiety that it's worse than having a heart attack if we don't perform the ritual that we're supposed to perform, if we don't go check a fifth or sixth time. And we try, you know, it, it, it's a feeling that you feel like you're dying. Now, for me, one of the things that I did do over the years was I learned to bargain with my OCD. And I've gotten to the point now where instead of 10 to 20 times a night, 3 to 5. And it's still a lot of times to, to, to walk around the house and make sure everything's over again. Because it's, you know, OCD is like a loop. It's like your mind is stuck in a loop. And I've been able to sometimes force it out of that. Uh, it took a lot of work. It took therapy. And it took actually taking charge of my own mental health to be able to, you know, do that. So bargaining, talking to your mental illness like it's a person and saying, you know, look, be, being the logical one. Like you're talking to someone who's not logical, which obviously it's not. That's helped for me. Meditation has helped. Cannabis has helped. And getting out doors and just trying to be uh, in the moment with nature has really helped. So if you're out there and you're suffering, um, be gentle with yourself. Be okay with the things that you have to do to continue to exist in this place and time because it's probably one of the most difficult junctures that we as human beings have come upon on so many like hundreds of levels different levels so be good to yourself be good to one another um and uh you know there's treatments out there there have also been people using uh, low doses of psilocybin i myself started microdosing a couple of weeks ago almost month, maybe a little bit more, um, 
for my lupus symptoms, which were getting worse ever since we were sick in March. Uh, that was another thing. My, my lupus was, I was starting to slide into a relapse again. And uh, oh, I did not want to do that because I was not looking forward to that kind of pain. So I started microdosing with psilocybin and it has been working really well. Plus I've been sleeping better and waking up with like, with no tiredness after seven hours. So it's, uh, anyway, there's all sorts of things out there for you to, to look into, you know, while we still have the internet up and running, um, look into different things that can help your mental health. It doesn't necessarily have to be a prescription. If you have to be on a prescription, that's fine. But if you don't, there are other alternatives out there and you can look into them. Lots of supplements, lots of herbal remedies, and, um, you know, hopefully state by state as it gets legal, uh, there will be dispensaries where you can go and you can pick up, you know, your medicine. So I hope everyone has a beautiful rest of your Saturday. That's my church. It was all about OCD. <laughs> Love you guys. Namaste.